How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 and Pacific, 1 Eastern, and Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Thursday on the show, and you know what that means? Actually, you don't know what that means because you probably can't see me right now. We're working on getting a video link up right now, and you're going to see me momentarily. There we go. Hopefully it's working now. But anyway, we got a lot to get into today, and I am back. I did not feel well yesterday at all. And uh, I've done this show with COVID uh, a couple of times, actually. But uh, I felt bad enough that uh, I couldn't even do a show yesterday. So I apologize to everybody. Thanks to Mike and uh, Filthy Tom holding the show together when I was gone. But in fact, I am back, and we got a lot of news to talk about here today, not the least of which is the AEW Dynamite show from last night. A lot of stuff happening on the show yesterday, and we're going to tell you about that. And yes, we're going to open up with notes on Hangman Page, the injury to Hangman Page. Allegedly, as it turns out, it wasn't an injury, and we'll tell you why. But we do have injuries to talk about, including uh, Shotzi. we got to talk about Shotzi's injury. And uh, all of the other news leading into the WWE pay-per-view this weekend. Uh, also, some other notes from the Dynamite show, including Madison Rain, who got dropped on her head. We have an update on her. We have an update on the AEW, uh, what they're planning on doing over WrestleMania weekend for their shows. We got a WWE creative team member who has left WWE and is now uh, working for AEW. We'll tell you about her. The Raw number from Monday, which was gigantic. Uh, the Briscoes going into the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame. Brock Lesnar not going into the uh, the WWE video game. And uh, and plenty more. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com. F4W online threads, Instagram, and Cameo. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. We've almost reached the pinnacle of the tour, but this is one of the most important things. This is the computer. This is the workstation where I do the majority of the actual physical part of putting Figure 4 together. I do the writing here, the editing here, of course the phone calls, um, even the uh, microphone here when we used to do Wrestling Observer Live, which has since died. And uh, in fact, I better put the uh, screensaver on here so this doesn't get burned in the screen. But Putting the newsletter together, people understand, is it's a lot of hard work and dedication, like two to three hours per week sometimes I have to spend on it. And, um, hold on a second. Figure four, who's this? Carl Thrillo? Yeah. yeah hey, 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 listen, can I, can I call you back? I'm, I'm doing something here right now. My fridge? Yes, running. Hello? Anyway, um, this is, uh, like I said, computer, got the TV here, this is pretty much the place. This is going to be a quick tour of the trophy room. This is actually my trophy case, it's made of mahogany, very expensive. But what is worth far more than the case itself is what is inside, and that is the medals from the various sports and the accomplishments that I've achieved during my lifetime. This first drawer here is my gymnastics medal. Here, I got uh, state and such. These are my Taekwondo medals. These down here, amateur wrestling medals. And down here are the 26 medals that I won in the five kilometer walk down to the Bothell Landing over the course of the past five years. And, um, you know, I realize that uh, I'm a four sports superstar right here. And some people, you know, it might, uh, might bother them that they haven't had such achievements in their life. But I think that the whole point is that you can achieve in anything. You know, if you can make a great pie, you can win the pie eating contest at the uh, Puyallup Fair. And, uh, 
I don't know, hell, if you can eat a good pie, you might win the pie eating contest as well. So there's, there's achievement in this life for everybody. All right, back here on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. Yes, I am back, ready to go here today. It was a rough one, but uh, but thanks, Mike, for stepping up at the last second to save my life yesterday. I appreciate that. That's what a good teammate does. Just like your good teammate, Filthy Tom Lawler, the one you always talk down about, he jumped in, took the hot tag, and got right into action. Yeah, Tom's good that way. All right, we got a lot of news to get into here today, and I'm trying to... Uh, I got a new thing here. We're live, pal. Yeah, we are live. <laughs> but, uh, all right, let's try this. Well, you know, I was doing the Brian and Vinny show the other day, and it dropped multiple times. Look and, at you. Just, uh, can't you see it start moving? He just put quarters into the bed. Look yeah, just, uh, that's how I did that. <laughs> But anyway, I got some new stuff, and I got to make sure everything works. And uh, so far, so good. But we'll see as the show goes on here. I heard AT and T went completely down yesterday. That's like what I heard. Yeah, it was. It happened during Observer Live because I looked down at my phone, and all of a sudden, it said SOS on it. And I was like, "That doesn't sound right." And uh, <laughs> turns out it wasn't right. But anyway, we got to get on with the news here because I know everybody wants to talk about the Hangman. So let's talk about what's going on with the Hangman. So. I will explain this exactly how it's happened to me as I normally do in these situations because uh, things happen and then, you know, things change. So what happened was I am in Hawaii. And so the show doesn't air here until 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. Okay. That's when I could first watch the show here, 1 a.m. Eastern. So last night I started getting text messages you know, check on the hangman. Is hangman okay? I was like, oh man, what happened now? So I can't even watch the show yet. So I go on uh, Twitter and I see the animated gif of him, you know, flipping out of the Samoa Joe muscle buster and landing on his foot and going down and, uh, and immediately getting out of the ring. I thought that doesn't look good. So I started texting people. Is the hangman okay? And the responses I got were, I don't know. What happened? And I was like, well, isn't everybody talking about this? And so, you know, then I got another report from, you know, somebody who was at ringside. And they said when hangman went down, he was he was trying to tell the camera guy that his ankle was broken. He thought his ankle was broken. So I started texting people. I'm like, Is, did, it, did hangman break his ankle? And they're like, I don't know, man, that sounds horrible. What what horrible luck. And as the night wore on, it was like more people started hearing that Hangman was hurt. But nobody nobody knew exactly what was going on. They just heard, you know, Hangman looks like he's hurt. So I went to uh, bed after the show, and I woke up this morning, and I started getting these messages that Hangman's not hurt. It's a work. And so I thought, what? And so I started messaging people again, and I was like, Hangman's injury was a work? And their response was, what? I had no idea. So essentially what happened was, Hangman is not hurt. Hangman, however, I don't know if, I don't know if the people in the match knew. All I know is almost nobody knew. He worked an ankle injury. And the reason that he worked the ankle injury is because he has something going on in his personal life, and he may not be able to work the pay-per-view. And so he worked this ankle injury, and essentially, if he can work the pay-per-view, 
then I guess he's going to tape it up and work because he's not actually hurt. And if he can't work the pay-per-view, then this is the cover story as to why he can't work the pay-per-view. He injured his ankle. And virtually nobody knew about it. And I don't know if even the people in the match knew that he was going to do this. Because if you look at the timing of it, what happens is the very last spot that he's required to do, that's when he injured his ankle. He tagged out. He went outside. And he wasn't needed in the match at any point from that point forward. So, you know, I can tell you that a lot of people in AEW love Hangman. We've been talking about this for a long time. He's very popular. He's a very likable guy. And uh, and there were people very close to Hangman who even this morning didn't know what was going on. So, you know, the idea that, you know, everybody was worked with this story. Actually, everybody wasn't worked. Well, I mean, they were worked, but it wasn't like this was Christian Cage and, and you know, Adam Copeland, for example. Adam Copeland takes a concerto, and everybody knows it's an injury angle. The thing was planned. Blah, blah, blah. This was not that at all. And I presume that him and Tony talked about it, but I can't even tell you that for sure. But point of the story is he is okay. He may work the pay-per-view. He may not work the pay-per-view. And I don't know if we're going to know whether he's going to work the pay-per-view or not until maybe the very last minute. I don't know exactly what the personal issues are, but they are there, and that's what's going on. In a business built by liars who lie. <laughs> and I'm not throwing Hangman Adam Page under some sort of carny bus here. If he's got a personal issue going on, he's got a personal issue going on. But uh, how you just went about uh, describing things and, and how they're playing out, you know, guys working locker rooms and working this person for whatever reason or that person or an insurance company. I mean, it's just, it's just such a well, pro wrestling he, story he was, in some I, ways. I want to make this clear. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't think that he was trying to work people. Like, let's go back to, to I think he's uh, given himself an excuse. Like I'm saying, I'm not killing him for, exactly. for doing this. I, I don't think that there was anything like, this is not WCW where Bishop would work the boys. Yeah. Because he was trying to, whatever. This is like, he doesn't know if he can work the show. And so this is what he came up with in case he can't work the show. But, but because not, of all of that, the history of things, and because people are the way they are now on social media and stuff like that, it just, you know, because I saw a bunch of people piling on on Dave about, you know, he got worked and, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it's such, you know, it's probably all very innocent here, but it's just, it comes across as such a, a pro wrestling thing to me. Well, I want to make this clear as well, that like, whatever the personal issue is, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's, it's, I know everybody wants to know everything, but this is a personal matter. Yeah, and if it's it a was. personal matter where he might not be able to work a pay-per-view then that's his personal matter to deal with. And maybe he doesn't want to explain to everybody what's going on. And thus he came up with an idea in case he can't be there. And that's it. So I don't know what's going on. I do know that he's okay. Now, another person that apparently is okay is Madison Rain. Uh, she had a terrible match with Deanna Parazzo. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if something happened during the commercial break. But the match was okay until the break but then when they came back from the break this match was just it was like it was atrocious i mean the worst aw match you've seen in forever and i don't know what happened but madison was she was slow it, it looked i mean it was just it was bad, it was bad. and then <laughs> diana went for like a uh flat liner or something and for whatever reason madison was gonna like flip over i don't even know why and she landed right on her head the ref, boom, dropped down to make sure that she was all right, and apparently she was. And she sent out on X today that I'm okay. Thanks so much to everybody who celebrated my dynamite return, those who checked on me afterwards. To those who have never stepped into a ring but tweeted awful things at me with zero knowledge of what actually happened, thanks for watching. Have a great day. The commentary team then talked about everything. So I don't know what happened. She didn't explain what happened, but uh, she landed on her head, and apparently she's all right. And uh, and hopefully she is all right because it's wrestling. And a lot of times we hear people are all right, but they're not all right. 
And uh, and the last one we have to mention is Shotzi. You may have talked about this yesterday, but uh, she has a torn ACL. And one of those deals, jumped off the apron, landed on two feet, boom, blew out her ACL. And it's not unusual. It happens all the time. I've talked to people who have seen it happen multiple times. And it sucks. And all the best to her. Back in the more of a life. You know, that was a very special night for me. Um, and I've listened to Cody about it. It's not one of his, it's not his top match, he says, but man, it's mine. You know what I mean? It's uh, very special in my heart. And to do that at 50, right, is uh, it's just a, it's a great achievement for somebody like me, man. It really is to be in my, kind of my, st- my shape still, in good shape to be able to go out there with the young, young kids and pull things off. Um, it's, it's so amazing. You know, when I was so nervous when we, you know, Cody's music hit and he broke the throne with a sledgehammer and all that, I'm just waiting for my, my entrance. Right. And this new upstart company, AEW, I didn't know how the fans would respond to me, uh, whether they would boo me or whether they would, you know, cheer me or whatever so i'm so nervous and i'm so laser focused on what i'm doing but it, it was like god my butterflies in my stomach were crazy my music hit and they responded in kind and i was like okay it's not so bad and i'm always like that as soon as i go through the tunnel it goes away right and then i'm laser focused on what i need to do man and it's like it was good to feel that reaction from the a new fan base that had watched me my whole career, but they're different than WWE fans to go down there. And, you know, um, I've explained this before and it's, let's see if you can understand it. I step in the ring, right. And they start chanting Dusty's name, right. Which really just, oh man, you know, chills on your, on your body. You're in the moment. You're so laser focused. And you hear that for a moment because I point to the to the sky, I point up, and they started to chant Dusty. And then all of a sudden, the sound and everybody in the arena has become blurry to me, right? I can hear them, but I can't hear them. I can see them, but I can't. I'm so focused on Cody and what we need to do right now to get it to where it is. Because for years and years, I was told, no, it wasn't good enough to be on WrestleMania or whatever. So... We had a thing to prove here and I was focused about it. And we probably could have done a couple things wrong in that match and it still wouldn't have mattered. It was so good. The story was built in one promo a piece. They were ready for it. All the stars aligned, the magic happens and we struck lightning and it was really cool to do. And I think that match will go down in history as is, you know, one of the greatest matches of all time. You know, there's some great matches out there, but I think it really, it, it holds water. I think it, it's going to be talked about for 10 years from now, you know, 15, 20 years from now. Here's the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Zipper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So we got a lot of shows coming up this weekend. We've got uh, Rampage tomorrow. Mariah May versus Anna J. Private Party and Matt Seidel versus Top Flight Action Andretti versus Penta, Commander, and Brian Keith. Penta, Commander, and Brian Keith is the team. <laughs> Roderick Strong versus Jake Hager. The Young Bucks will be in action. And Sammy Guevara will speak. And then Saturday for Collision, we have got Jay White, Billy Gunn, and uh, one of the guns. I guess it's not uh, Austin. Colton. Colton, yes. They will be in trios action. We don't know against who. 
We've got FTR versus Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty. And we've got Brian Danielson versus June Akiyama. So, I don't know, man. I think you need a stronger lineup for that one. I know people are going to say, well, you know, the WWE pay-per-view is, is uh, you know, it's airing late Friday night. But uh, we have seen this before on the overseas pay-per-views. It doesn't matter when it airs. Most people are going to watch it on delay at night. And so Collision is probably going to get killed. That's what's happened in the past. And the uh, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view is uh, the last stop on the road to WrestleMania, as they call it. We have Seth Rollins, Challenger being determined, with Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, L.A. Knight, Lashley, and uh, why do I have an old lineup here every time? It's driving me nuts. <laughs> I have to do this again. God, I did this last night. Oh, no. I well, as it. you look for that, I could bring up the New Japan shows. I don't need or... it because I'm not, I'm not looking for the G1 here. I just need some matches. We have got Jesus. Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul for the men. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Trippany Stratton, Naomi, and Raquel for the women. Trippany. Yeah, Trippany. <laughs> It's trippy. It's trippy time. Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax for the women's title. And Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate. Why does everyone have to be catch nowadays? We got the, the catch crew in NXT. We got yeah. the uh, new catch Republic. Alley catch. Oh, yeah, it's like all these, <laughs> these catch blokes. Catch 22. Yeah. Yeah, catch 22. So that's the lineup so far. Four matches for that uh, that show. And, of course, the top two matches are going to be long. Going to be long matches. So there you go. What were you going to say now, Mike? Well, I was going to fill some time, you know, in that Dave way of saying there's a lot of stuff this weekend. I'm not going to throw a UFC at you, but it is notable that there are new two New Japan shows, one taking place early uh, well, early Friday and Saturday night uh, Eastern time here in the United States. But uh, Nick Nemeth against David Finley and Hiroshi Tanahashi against Matt Riddle and Nemeth and Riddle's uh, Japanese proper debuts. And on that show also is uh, Mayu Iwatani and Mina Shirakawa. So that that's notable. That's on the 23rd tomorrow. And then on Saturday, Tetsuya Naito and Sonata for their rematch for the IWGP title. And then we can completely be done with any thoughts of Sonata in and around the IWGP title picture. And then a travesty of justice, hair versus hair this is happening way too early two men with wonderful hair yuya umura and yoda suji man oh man yeah all right oh uh, by the way some okada guy too he's wrapping up his deal there yeah he is it's a bunch of multi-person matches yeah it's uh, it's fine no jobs after leaving the wwe creative team jennifer peppermint has landed in aew so this one's kind of interesting so she worked with WWE and Creative from 2017 to 2024. So let me tell you something. Working in WWE Creative for seven years, you must have been pretty good at your job because they have a high turnover rate. So she left a week ago and now is going to be working at AEW. They have given her the job title of president, vice president of content development. She's a VP, and she worked on One Life to Live, As the World Turns. She has won multiple daytime Emmy Awards, much like our own Sean Garrett. But the key is she was very close with Mercedes Monet. So it looks like Mercedes is coming in, and she will have her own writer. So, uh... How about that? She's got her own writer, and uh, and we are ready to rock and roll, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> you, hey, coming up, everybody. Yeah, you don't you don't seem particularly bullish on this idea, from how hey, it listen, sounds. Maybe this whole thing is going to work out great. Okay, <laughs> maybe this whole thing is going to work out great, but we'll see. Okay. Because well. you know what? Whatever you want to say about Mercedes, she does, in fact, have a lot of demands. And I don't want to hear anybody telling me this is not true. Okay? Do you guys remember 
her departure from WWE. She didn't like a storyline they were doing. And I know that the diehard Mercedes Monet Sasha Banks fans are going to tell you that she had every right. And she has she has every right to walk out of anything she wants. You're right. But here's the thing. The storyline that she didn't want to do on the grand scale of stupid ideas in WWE, it was not a stupid idea that they had for her. And she left. And she's going to AEW. And we're going to see how it goes. I, you know, you I will no never talking about this or thinking this. Think again. There's plenty of people in AEW thinking the exact same thing. So we shall see. You have this- had your knives out for her ever since she left WWE and whatever I happened not had there my when he out came. For anybody. People have their knives out for me. No, no, no. no with her, with their departure, you were cynical and nasty about it right off the bat, and. You know, since then, you have not changed your stance on on her or no. Trinity walking out. Now, I'll say this. This lady is not the vice president of Mercedes Monet or Mercedes Verano or whatever her name is. She's supposed to be the vice president of talent or, or con- whatever this, this title is. It's supposed to be for multiple people. Now, if she can come up with storylines that benefit that women's division that may put Mercedes first. Okay. You know, she, every writer's got their favorites. Everybody's got their person, but she's still hired by Tony Khan, both of them. And if I'm Tony Khan, you better have a a use for Miss Pepperman that it is far past just Mercedes because otherwise you got a really big problem that you're opening yourself up to. You may have done that anyway Don't when it comes it, to you brother. talking about Don't her demands. Now you're pulling. Now you're pulling it. All what right. What do you mean? Right. You'll get it. They're opening themselves up to a bigger problem, huh? Hmm. Well, if she's if what is I her position, that, Brian? What is her position? No, you didn't. You just you didn't say anything Vice, there. You Vice didn't. President you didn't try of, to. You uh, just tried to play gotcha with me, and you didn't get me. Development. That's her she's, role. So she's not the vice president of Mercedes Monet, correct? Uh, hey, I don't know. They're not going to give her a. You think they're going to give her a title, vice president of Mercedes Monet? Well, no, here's the thing: gonna is she going to be? Title, is she going to be of content development? So she has. She's probably there to get more than just Mercedes shaken. Then you know what I mean. Well, Obviously, well, she's there. That's why she's. Of course, that's why. But you don't think she came? You don't listen. As soon as she left, everybody knew she was immediately going to AEW. Yeah, yes, because that's true. Mercedes, who's debuting yes. we, yes. in a couple of weeks. We all heard that, yes. All right, all right, well. But while she's there, if you're Tony Khan, you better make sure that this woman who won an Emmy on Days of Our Lives and has been working seven years for WWE and was in WWE when Mercedes was not there that she does more than just get Mercedes over and benefit Mercedes, or you're opening yourself up to problems. I don't see how I'm saying anything that controversial there. If you're hiring this woman who seems to have a lot on her resume and that women's division or whatever she touches doesn't get better, or that would be bad. If she's just in the Mercedes Monet business and you gave her a vice presidential title as Mercedes personal writer, yeah, you opened yourself up to some issues, I'm sure, from other people there. I think you guys need to understand something about AEW, okay? They like vice presidents, that's for is sure. She, is she specifically being brought in to only be Mercedes' personal writer? Of course not. Is she being brought in to, in general, work on creative? Yes, okay? Tony Khan is going to do everything that he wants to do. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your job is. It doesn't matter what your idea is. At the end of the day, he's going to do his thing. So is she going to work on other storylines? Yes. Okay. Is this still going to be pretty much exactly the same show it's always been? Because it will be Tony Khan's vision and Tony Khan's storylines all up and down the show? Yes. Okay. So whatever you want to say, 
about what she's actually going to be doing, that's fine. I'm just telling you what's going on here. Why is everyone fighting me about this? What are you doing? Why is everyone fighting me about this? What's the problem here? I'm it's telling how you, you're oh, coming across. You're not making your case very clear, or you're. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. No problem. Okay. Vern says I'm wrong. Just get back to me in a few months, okay? Why does everyone think I don't know what I'm talking about? Get out of here. Talk to you in a moment. Observer Live. Bother with his job. Yeah, now his stomach hurts again. He wants to get out of here early. Look yeah, at him. My stomach hurts. I'm getting out of here. Go away, everybody. <laughs> hey, I know how to make people mad. Let's talk about raw, raw rating. <laughs> I thought you're gonna do an NXT review. Nah, who cares? So, um, that NXT show. God. <laughs> raw Monday. For everybody that said this Cody thing killed him, and he was a nerd afterwards. And let me get this straight. I thought the thing where he stepped away was stupid. But the fact is, it didn't hurt this guy at all. This Raw show, 1.87 million viewers, a point six three, in 18 to 49, a point five one in 18 to 34, which is gigantic. First for the night on cable. Beat everything on television except the first half hour went uh, head-to-head with the post-show for the Daytona 500. 
which uh, shockingly did very well. And uh, 1.97 million the first hour, 1.9 million second, 1.75 million third. And that Cody versus Drew McIntyre match was gigantic. It broke 2 million viewers. It did, I believe, a 0. .69 in 18 to 49. It was one of those shows where, like, it just kind of goes like this and then shoots straight up for the Cody match and then returns kind of to normal and then still did well for the rest of the show. So uh, this guy is so over right now, and he's going to be the champion and probably feuding with Drew McIntyre after uh, he wins the title, which I guess means we have to figure out what they're going to do with Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Like, is he going to win the chamber? Is he going to go on? And, like, what are they going to do here? I do not know. Yeah, I mean, some of the uh, most interesting creative drama, you know, for the rest of the card really comes out of Sami Zayn and Damian Priest and Drew McIntyre and, and some other people, you know, Gunther. Where are they going to fit after WrestleMania? I mean, there's a lot there that, you know, that you could actually unpack when it comes to those guys. And I don't know if Cody is so over but he's still over, and nothing that has happened with The Rock and Roman Reigns has damaged him in the short term. And I also believe that, you know, anytime Cody Rhodes is on the screen right now, and this is not to diminish him, it's just to point out that everybody that is watching because it's mania season and watching because The Rock, you know, you never know if Cody's going to be there. Maybe The Rock might show up, and I have a feeling that that probably isn't hurting when it comes to any time Cody Rhodes is going to be on screen, whether that be on Raw or SmackDown. So, uh, yeah, big numbers for uh, for Raw. And uh, I won't talk about NXT, but I wasn't uh, blown away by the show this week. It was just... problem was it was a double taping, and so the crowd was, like, totally dead. They were, like, so dead for that show. And then, you know, it was actually kind of sad because they were kind of, not for the whole show, but, like, there were segments on Dynamite where they were just also dead, including that Deanna Parazzo match. Oh. It is now a thing. Every Deanna Parazzo match, the crowd is completely dead. And it, was, it happened again here on this show. And they did the segment where, you know, first she had a squash match win against a, quote, local talent. Or no, first it was Tony Storm getting the the win over the local talent. And then uh, Deanna comes out for the match with Madison Rain. And my God, the crowd was dead. The match was terrible. And uh, this this feud is not hot. The Deanna tony Storm feud is not hot. You know what one of the problems, though, is, Brian, and maybe, yeah, Deanna and her style and everything, uh, yeah, it's probably tough right now to get a reaction. But who has gotten a reaction other than Tony Storm. When Tony Storm is on screen being as Tony Storm as possible, you get a reaction. But every match that she's been involved with when it comes to this character, you know, again, I it's tough because I think it's incredibly entertaining when she's being this version of Tony Storm, but they have not figured out a way to get that and apply it to the feud she's with or to the opponent that she's battling. And I thought maybe you'd be able to do it with Deanna because they do have a history and some of that stuff, but it just, it still, it has not worked in that Madison match, you know, and I'm sorry for all the people that came after her, you know, online, that sucks, but the match was terrible. And there were times throughout last night during a lot of matches from pillar to post where, it seemed like time was standing still at one moment or another. And that entire match, especially after the commercial break, certainly was that. And it was not a good representation, again, of what Perazzo can probably do in a ring and how good a Perazzo store match is probably going to be. At least I was hoping it was going to be that way. I, I, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll find out when it actually happens. I will say that this was one of those dynamite shows where I thought that the best stuff on the show was actually not in the ring. The uh, the Dax and Cash versus Moxley and Claudio match, I thought was a very good match, but it wasn't nearly as good as that Dax versus Moxley match that we saw. That match was awesome. This match was very good. The finish was weird, and they did a time limit draw to set up a... a Another match coming up at the uh, at the pay-per-view. But the best things on the show were the Daniel Garcia promo that he cut on Christian. 
where is one of the better Daniel Garcia promos I've ever heard. And then we had probably the best Wardlow promo that I've ever heard. Not probably. the it was the best. Outstanding. Yeah. I mean, you know, he came out and when it first started, it was kind of the usual, like, you know, I didn't actually, to be honest, when it first started, I didn't like it at all. And then it ended up great. Yes. Because the first thing is he comes out and he goes, you know, I was being cheered year, you know, two years ago, city after city, everyone's cheering my name. I was the next big thing. But then they strapped the rocket to my back upside down and I've been screwed over and over. And I was like, you have? Like, all I ever see you do is win. You win, win, win. And yeah, they never, like, you haven't got a world title match or whatever, but you're not being buried and you've had injuries and et cetera, et cetera. But then he starts bringing up the fact that I actually have never had a shot at the title. He says, I beat CM Punk's ass worse than anyone ever, and his body is still falling apart because of it. He says, I squash MGF like an insect. I beat him like nobody ever has in his career. And then he says, your champion is Samoa Joe. You remember what happened when we wrestled? I choked his ass out. And it's like, man, the guy's right. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, I'm better than you, and you know it. I am everything a world champion is supposed to be. There's nobody back there bigger, stronger, and faster than me. There's nobody who can stop me. This is no longer wrestling. It's a war. And when it was over, I was like, are they going to do Wardlow MJF at the pay-per-view? Like, I don't know when MJF is coming back, but he kept bringing up MJF over and over again. And, I mean, this was his best promo that he's ever done. So Outstanding. Outstanding. And I tell you what, Brian, too, what the other part was he hit every line, said every line with conviction. There was at no point did you think that this was a guy trying to, you know, call back on something that they said to say or, or tripped over anything. He was money throughout the whole thing. Hindsight being 2020, he comes out there with probably is an expensive watch, looked like a cheap looking watch on, came out with like the spaghetti string muscle shirt and a backwards hat. By the time the thing was over, I regretted him coming out in that gear because it was such a big main event style promo and he came across so good that way that I think they should check that the next time around. You know, go out there, you know, look more star-like, you know, when you go out there again because I thought that was as good as it could be and if he's going to have a match with MJF, especially one that's going to be relatively close coming, have him out there every week killing dudes you know have him point up and and because i think that's been a good part of his act too being pointing up at the the jumbotron and flexing on there i like the presentation that way so have him go out there sid sid justice sid vicious some guys after he gets done put him on the uh the the gurney and then slam him into it doesn't matter if there's a need for a match that week just have him destroy people because it puts in people's minds that this person gets wins. Again, this is why you have a card and with, with you know, mid-card, lower mid-card, all that sort of stuff. Do things with him. Give him a winning streak. So when it is time to face MJF, he's got some carnage behind him where he's not only going to beat MJF like he did the first time around, he really will need an oxygen mask when they carry him out. One that goes over his whole face and not just his nose, which was a great... Botchamania moment. Then the other, and actually the for sure best thing on the show was Darby Allen and Sting. And it's hard to talk about something like this because the promo itself was like, it was the best thing on the show, but it was also a promo bringing up real tragedy in Sting's life, which he channeled into a promo. And essentially this was everything they should have done last week in terms of Focusing on the beating of Sting's kids. So Darby has a photo, and it's a photo of Sting and his sons back in the 90s. And he says, these are Sting's kids. And in this picture, they were the same age as the Young Bucks kids are now. And the only thing that matters in the end is family. And then Sting walks into frame. This was all taped at Sting's house because he wasn't there last week and he wasn't there this week. And Sting says... Family is all that matters, and it strikes a nerve right now as well. Nobody's ever messed with my flesh and blood until you guys. Lots going on in my personal life over the past few weeks. My father passed away a week ago. He was like a hero to me. He taught me right. And he makes me think a lot about my own mortality. I used to think I was so invincible, and I still do feel that way, but time catches up, 
and it's caught up to me for sure. And I know I'm not invincible, but one thing I do know is whatever I have left in me, I'm bringing it to revolution. And Bucks, you have a fight on your hands, the fight of your life. And man, I watched this promo and the thing about his father, it's true. He died last week. And, you know, there are other personal issues going on in Sting's life. All of this coming to a head right when he's supposed to celebrate the end of his career. And man, this guy can't lose this match. I mean, I know he's never lost an AEW. I know he would go undefeated till the end. But he doesn't need to be putting over the Young Bucks at the end. He needs to get this win, retire as champion. And I'm sure... I'm sure the Bucks would probably say the same thing. I guess at the end of the day, it's going to be Sting's decision. I mean, if he decides he wants to lose, he will. But uh, if I were Tony Khan and he said he wanted to lose, I would strongly argue against it. And I would just say, we're not doing it. <laughs> we're not doing it. Happy ending for crying out loud. Let's just do the happy ending. We're not risking the riot here. And I saw you Rick realize Blair. it like, you know, you always see the the young bucks doing like, uh, you know, they make fun at WWE and and do when they back when they used to do the, uh, um, you know, being the elite and everything. But like they grew up massive uh, WWE fans, massive WCW fans, huge fans of Shawn Michaels, and they were massive fans of Sting. Like I don't know the last time something like this happened. But I'm not talking like a physical altercation. But if ever there's going to be that day where everyone's going to be in the locker room at Revolution and they're going to be fighting to lose this match, <laughs> I mean, this would be it. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, Sting's had a lot of issues. And, you know, if, if you watch the show, I saw people watch the show and say, man, this wasn't the best dynamite. But there have been so many things that have gone wrong in AEW of late. And I'm not talking like things that you can control, but like strings of bad luck, personal issues, illnesses, injuries. I mean, it's been one after another over the last couple of weeks. And the Sting one is a good example because he came forward with it. But like I said, it's not the only thing. So anyway, best of luck to Sting. And uh, let's see what happens to the pay-per-view. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I think it's my sobriety that keeps me going. Um, since I got clean and sober 15 years ago, it's it has put this kind of new shine on my life that I need to kick it into gear and continue growing and continue what I love to do, which is this wonderful business we're in and have some fun. And it's all about having fun. If you can't have fun at your job, then you don't really need to be in it. And I'm very good at what I do, so I love this business. And I just, uh, each time I go out there, it is an opportunity for me to be kind of a teacher for the youngins in the back because I'm very old school with a little new school attitude. So without the old, without the old school, there is no new school, right? So it's like all these people do the, all these impressive things all the time. And then what I like to do is completely different than that, and that's to tell a story it's very important to me because the fans kind of they have made us right so without the fans we're nothing and the, the fans that are uh going through their day and they might be having a a terrible day or whatever and they turn on the tv on AEW just to watch us it is my job to take them out of that day and entertain them but make them feel something that's the most important thing is to move somebody and to make them feel something because if you make them feel something they're going to come back and so that's that's kind of my my goal every time that I you know go out there. It's um, yeah, I get a lot ner I get a lot more nervous at my age for some reason, which is really weird. Um, and I think they're good nerves, but and I've always been nervous, but really since I've turned fifty, it's it's like every time I go out there, I'm just like, oh my god, man, I can't mess up, I can't mess up. Because, you know, there's people out there, they're going to be like, oh, Dustin needs to retire. And I hate that. I don't want that. I want to kill it each time. I want to put on a banger and uh, tell a good psychological story for the fans to enjoy. I don't think I really need to prove myself anymore. But I think it's just an internal thing that I need to prove to myself, hey, I can still go out there and do this, right? But as far as proving to anybody else, I, I believe 
people know how good I am and, and that I can go out there and wrestle circles around some of the young ones, even still today. And um, we have some incredible talent and I'm just trying to keep up. I'm just trying to keep in a word young, right? And it's very difficult when you're 54, almost 55, but just to throw in a, a couple of new things by evolving your characters and changing things up every once in a while, I'm good at that. And that gives me a little more life and gives me a little longer to kind of enjoy it, right? Before I need to switch it up again. And I think that's the key to my career is evolving. Well, at the end of the day, based on everything we've talked about here today, thank God Hangman isn't hurt. Really? Hopefully everything is, is all right in his, his personal life. But, yeah, that was the uh, highlights from the Dynamite show. And uh, later on tonight, it'll be Vinny and I talking NXT and AEW in depth. Got a lot to talk about on both of those shows, including how Lash Legend did in her impromptu main event <laughs> with Lyra. And I will have plenty of time to actually talk about that Lyra segment with, uh, what's her face? Tatum. Tatum Paxley. My God, that moment they had backstage. <laughs> oh, Lord. It gave me a moment. <laughs> I may need to do two shows. One just for that one and one for the rest of those two shows. I tell you what, Roxanne Perez is becoming every day more and more, even though they want her to be a heel, she's more and more a baby face because I would want to kill all of those people there as well. <laughs> well, you know, they, they want when you're in developmental for you to work both baby face and heel before you go up to the main roster. And you should. I, I watch the show and it's like, <laughs> it's fine with Roxanne doing a real role, but she needs to just be a lifetime baby face. Yeah, and it's yeah, not like yeah. she's bad at it. It's just, she's so completely likable. Like, why are we booing Roxanne Perez? It doesn't even make any sense. But that's what they're doing. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, I will be back tonight for the Brian and Vinny show. And also this weekend for the Observer Radio Show of the Day. We'll be recapping the Australia pay-per-view. And i got to figure out what's going on with these children. Well, hey, good timing, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs> <laughs>